Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today is Tuesday, July 11, 2023. It is a weird news day. Why do I say that? It's not because there's a little bit of news. There's a lot of news. But a lot of headlines and articles that are written are either about Bitcoin, which is not really remarkable in itself, um, but also either op-eds or kind of gossipy news. Look, for somebody who read the news every day for years, when a weird news day comes, you kind of just feel it. I can't put my finger on why, but you just feel it. For example, here's the top headline of the day. Crypto Twitter has been charged with tracking down spicy tweets that were deleted by Coinbase's CEO Brian Armstrong. He basically scrubbed all of Twitter from his old spicy tweets. It even appears that the Wayback Machine, it's a trusted internet archive, also has been scrubbed of all evidence of Brian's tweets. Some of the tweets that were deleted aren't really that spicy at all, but maybe they'll come up in a court case. Who knows? For example, Brian Armstrong complained that Coinbase was removed from Bitcoin.org. Not too consequential, was it? Also suggesting a for-profit Bitcoin fork. He claimed that altcoins were a distraction. I mean, yeah, that's a little spicy, but um, any Bitcoin maxi would say the same thing. And he had a tweet that was trying to pump his own bags after Coinbase listed ETH and it pumped 4%. Now, again, none of this seems really newsworthy, uh, but I think the biggest news in this is that the internet doesn't forget, and you'll be held accountable for anything that you post 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So if you're going to go into public office, if you're going to uh, maybe make a company that is going to be fighting with the SEC, you know what? Maybe an old tweet will come up now and then, and it might be read in court because the internet never forgets. So I guess tread carefully. Is that the moral of the story? Let's continue. Former SEC chairman Jay Clayton he said that regulators would find it hard to resist approving a spot Bitcoin ETF if the product performs the same functions as a futures ETF. He says that it's pretty remarkable that major players in traditional finance like BlackRock and so on and so forth want to put their names on a spot Bitcoin ETF application. Again, part of the weird news is that this is just gossip, speculation, op-ed, and I don't know, it's just basically what the whole news cycle today is all about. One thing I do want to point out though, is that, remember, he is not the SEC chair anymore. These political appointed positions or these positions within government, I promise you, Democrats are going to be united behind Democrats. Republicans are going to be united behind Republicans. But now that he's not the SEC chair, he's having this thought like, hey, maybe there's going to be a spot Bitcoin ETF. It's going to be hard to resist if it performs this way or that way. I think that his tone would be different if he was the SEC chair today. So I would say take his comments, take this rumor, take this gossip, with a grain of salt. According to a recent report by CoinShares, digital asset investment products registered $136 million of inflows in the past seven days, bringing the three-week total to almost a half a billion dollars. Guess what crypto is getting 98% of institutional investments? Well, if you guess Bitcoin, then you're right. I probably spoiled it by saying, now into some Bitcoin news. <laughs> Germany-based funds led the week with $61.5 million in inflows, market a solid $212 million in institutional activity so far this year. The United States landed in second place over this past seven days, posting $55.9 million of inflows, and then followed by Canada and Switzerland, who logged around $11 million and $8.9 million, respectively. Again, weird news. Why? Because a half a billion dollars seems like a lot of money until you're talking about a $1.2 trillion market cap for the crypto space and the leader Bitcoin with around $600 billion of market cap. So talking about a half a billion dollars of inflows over the past three weeks is kind of weird because it really is insignificant, especially even if you look at the 24-hour volume of $15 billion. Again, weird news. The British bank, Standard Charter, they made a pretty big prediction that Bitcoin could reach $50,000 this year and $120,000 by the end of 2024. This is a 300% leap from where it is today. They said this is going to be because of increased minor profitability per Bitcoin, meaning that they can sell less while maintaining cash inflows, reducing net Bitcoin supply, and pushing Bitcoin prices higher. Now, what do I think this really means? This means that the hype cycle is starting. You're going to have all kinds of people come out of the woodworks and make their predictions. It's almost like clockwork. Everybody's going to say where Bitcoin is going to go, what's going to be the top, what's going to be the future prices. And this is just the first one. 
You're going to see your Tim Drapers, your Michael Saylors, your, you're probably going to see Jamie Dimon make some kind of prediction of it going to zero or going to a trillion dollars or something ridiculous. Uh, you're going to see all of this. But here's the facts is don't think about the price. Just know that this is going to be early in the cycle. You're going to hear a lot about this. And look, if you're hodling Bitcoin, this is not financial advice, but if you're hodling Bitcoin or any digital asset, if you feel like selling because you want the money, you want the profits, just do it. If you want to hodl, then hodl. But if you're going to wait for a price because somebody said $120,000 by the end of 2024, you're going to be sorely disappointed and you might miss any opportunity you have for buying or selling because you're listening to standard chartered. So these banks that, to be honest with you, they haven't even been following the damn market until they found it. It could be profitable for themselves. Hashtag ETF coming. Hashtag they're going to follow them damn self. Hashtag trying to make that money. Y'all just take care of yourself. Speaking of Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin hash rate has hit an all time high and it spiked to 465 exahashes on Saturday. And that's from 406 exahashes the previous day, which was also an all time high. They said one potential reason for the latest Bitcoin hash rate surge is that Texas-based miners, or miners in general, are basically turning their mining equipment back on to full power, full capacity. People are also saying that these miners are replacing their older hardware with newer and more efficient machines in anticipation of the upcoming halving, which means the hash rate is still rising because the new machines are more efficient, they have better hash rate, and they're less using less electricity, so they're stacking more sets. And remember, when Bitcoin price is up, more miners are going to come in because it's profitable to mine. And the fact is, with all these miners turning back on, more efficient machines, we're going to have a difficulty adjustment. And they say, in quote, it's going to be a fucking whopper. Now, remember what I've been saying for the past years. If you've been following me, you know I've been very consistent with this. When Bitcoin price goes down after the bull run, like we went to 69000 I said, you're going to know we're going to bear because all the miners are going to turn off their machines and wait and so when you saw the 17 18 19 20 thousand dollar bitcoin and those big dips down we heard people turning off their machines we heard these mining companies liquidating some machines some of them going bankrupt people just at home turning off their machines because they were not profitable and i said that's when you know the bottom is in again not financial advice but that's when you know the bottom bottom is in now when you see people turning back on their machines and ordering new machines and talking about the having, you know that for the foreseeable future, we're going to be in a growth period. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to go up to the moon in price, but that does mean that the price of Bitcoin is sustainable for miners. Therefore, you're going to see growth in mining companies, independent miners, mining pools, Bitmain ant miners are going to be selling like hotcakes. This is the time people are going to start really building. So this is positive news about the stability and the sustainability of this market however there could be one black swan that comes out the etf gets rejected price dumps because investors are dumping because they're holding on for a spot bitcoin etf and then we'll see if the miners stay on i think they will but you will see volatility depending on the verdict of this etf now moving over to ethereum just shy of 45 billion dollars or 20 percent of the ethereum in circulation has now been staked that's about 24 million eth and that ETH is currently locked up across 744,000 validators. Remember, a validator is someone who pledged at least 32 ETH for the chance to validate transactions and get some fees and stack some more Ethereum. So where is the lion's share of this ETH being held? Well, it's being held in Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, and OKX. Just those guys account for 19% of all staked Ethereum. Moving into some scamming news, one of the oldest scams in the book, the DOJ just tar charged a Moroccan man with stealing $450,000 in an open sea spoofing scam. Basically, he made a fake open sea site to lure a Manhattan NFT owner to register with it and hand over his seed phrase to his digital wallet. Then he used his seed phrase against him, obviously, and then he transferred his cryptocurrency out of his wallet and his NFTs out of his wallet to the scammer's wallet. And one of those NFTs was a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT worth around $92,000 at the time. Long story short, they got him, and he's getting charged by the DOJ. And finally, in the NSA CIA news of the day, Arkham Intelligence just did the most baffling thing, which I can't even believe is legal. And they're not gonna get 
they should get beat up, to be honest with you. I'm not calling for violence. No, no, I didn't say that. I'm just saying that this is really, really messed up. So Arkham Intelligence is a blockchain intelligence company. And they announced on Twitter today that it's launching the world's first on-chain intelligence exchange, meaning that this platform is going to give you Intel bounties. Basically, they're saying if you dox people's wallets, so basically you have a crypto wallet with Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever. Nobody knows who those wallets are because they're anonymous, right? But if you know and you can figure out whose wallet is and dox those wallets and put a name to those wallets, they're going to give you money. What the absolute craziness is that? That's basically opening up a... I mean, I, I can't believe this is illegal. Arkham says that it will bridge the gap between analysts on one hand and traders, investors, journalists, and researchers. This really sounds like a CIA NSA collaboration or just a company that has lost its absolute mind and is going to put a lot of people at risk. This is baffling to me. And anybody who uses this system to dox people's wallets, I, I don't wish good things on you because that's really, really shady. Anyway, now to those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. The time is 8.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fear Greed Index is at 56. Neutral. I'm telling you, we're going to go sideways for a while. Just get used to it. Bitcoin is in at $30,400, up a half a percent in 24. Ethereum's at $1,870, pretty much even in 24. Tether's number three. Binance is at 245, up 1.7%. And USDC is number five. Rounding off the top 10, we have XRP, Cardano, Do, Solana, and Litecoin up 2.5%. The total market cap is up a half a percent. It's at 1.18 trillion. We have a Bitcoin dominance on coin market cap at 49.9 and an ETH dominance of 19%. And that was our news today. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, happy hodling, everyone. <laughs>